Hey guys, welcome to The Homestead. So today we're gonna to talk about what we would do if you're in an apartment, you're in the city right now and the collapse is happening, what would I do? What would I, because I lived in an apartment for a while. We lived in an apartment, our family did. And, you know, I it, when we had already started planning back when we lived in that apartment, what did we do? So we're going to go through a number of those items today that I have let, written down in my notes. But before I begin that, I'm just going to show you what we did this morning here on the homestead. Uh, I have three balls of mozzarella cheese. I keep them in these jars here. And each one is uh, just a ball of mozzarella. So I made three balls of mozzarella. I have about a quart of buttermilk that we had left over from the butter we made. Just a round slab of butter. I would say that weighs about a pound. It's about a pound of butter we made this morning. So um, that butter, and then I even scraped uh, the little Ninja processor and saved whatever I could scrape out because it's just so precious. I mean, it's so hard to make this because we haven't been to the store in like um, over a week now and uh, probably not going to go to the store this week or next week uh, just based on what we're reading in the news and seeing what's going on. And so we have the ability here to make our own cheese, make our own butter. And because we use these things on a regular basis, you know, we need them, uh, you know, just to keep up with things. And I know some people are probably having a hard time trying to find some of these things right now. But because we have an abundance of milk in the neighborhood, um, we can make these things on our own. And so um, this is going to be about divided. It's going to be divided in half. I'll give half of it to Joanne, and she can uh, use it for her butter this week. And I'll give her some of the cheese. And I think I'm going to give her this buttermilk. She's going to try to make buttermilk pancakes tonight for dinner. So that'll be good. And um, so... That's what's going on in the homestead right now. But, you know, as I was making this today, you know, I make this in my Ninja. It makes it very, very easy. But people back 100 years ago, they had a really hard time making these products right here. It took a lot of time and effort. I remember we were reading, I remember I mentioned this book recently in a video called Little Britches. And I encourage parents, if you want a really good book to read to your kids, uh, to get an idea of how things were about 100 years ago, or a little over 100 years ago now, um, this book, Little Britches, this one's called Father and I Were Ranchers. I think there's different ones in the series. But I remember as we were reading this, there was a time when they're going through and they have a special occasions that come up here and there, holidays, things like that. Uh, and I remember it was, I think it was Thanksgiving or Christmas where they talk about it in the book and they are making desserts. And one of those was having real whipped cream or real ice cream. Uh, and that was something that took a lot of effort. As I'm blending uh, the cream that I scraped off of the milk uh, that I got from our neighbor's cows, um, I put it in here, and I think I got it up to about here or so in cream, about halfway or thereabouts. And I'm blending this, and what happens is if you keep the blender on, at some point it turns into whipped cream. And you can hear the difference in the blades when it's going. Um, you know that uh, a change has happened in the cream. And so I stopped it and I looked and sure enough, it was in whipped cream. And you put your finger in, taste it. It tastes so good, by the way. But it's whipped cream. You turn it, you keep it going. And eventually that whipped cream turns into butter. It becomes more solid. And then you have the buttermilk that's uh, surrounding the butter that you can pour off and use for other things. And so, uh, but it just boggled my mind to realize how much work and effort went into making that whipped cream because they didn't have a fancy handy dandy ninja okay they had to do that by hand a butter churn and they had to sit there for hours just churning that butter uh, and and it was something that was ugh, valuable very valuable because of the time invested into doing that. And maybe they had a child, uh, the, the mother of the house would have a child sit there and churn the butter or the children would take turns because it was tiring work. And so, but eventually that butter would get churned. And at some point you had to decide whether or not you're going to keep the whipped cream or, which is, would definitely be a treat, or you continue to make, you need to continue to churn to make that butter. And so it was very valuable because of the time invested. And as you look back throughout history, uh, people in the cities, they wanted this. And uh, only f families who had the means, uh, if they didn't make it themselves, you'd have to buy this butter and buy that cream or buy that cheese. And then you realize just what took place there. You had these giant feedlots of all these cows that supplied these for the cities. And really what happened was they fed these cows a bunch of garbage. 
because they were trying to turn this stuff out as fast as possible. And the industrialized revolution was coming into play and they had machines now to make these things. And they were trying to make as much as possible, fast, as quickly as possible. And they fed the cows a bunch of garbage and the milk they produced was also garbage and it made people sick. And so they began to pasteurize the milk. And when they began to pasteurize the milk, uh, that took care of a lot of the problems. But raw milk, when cows are fed what they should be fed normally in nature, uh, produces a very good product. Um, but it's very valuable when it's done by hand. And so we really appreciate when we have devices like these today to make all of these products as delicious as they are. So um, it really drives it home. Experiencing what we're experiencing right now with kind of this downturn in the economy and this sort of mid-collapse that we're seeing right now, when you have to start making things on your own, it really makes you appreciate where those things come from. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into this. If I was in an apartment right now, what would I be doing? What would I be doing? So let's just say, for instance, I have no homestead. I have nowhere to go to Homestead. I have no relatives to go to. I have nowhere to bug out to. I'm in this apartment and this is what I've got. What can I do? If this really is the downturn, if there's a real economic collapse coming and I truly believe we, this could be it, I really do. As, as the more and more, I, I'm having a separate video coming out soon on why I think, you know, 50-50. You know, yesterday, if you'd asked me, I was more like 60-40, 60 40 60 60%, you know, this is going to recover 40%. It may not. Now I'm 50-50, 50-50 because of all of the trillions they're pumping into this economy. It's going to cause massive inflation. I'll get into that in another video. But if this is really it, what can, if I was in an apartment, which I know some of you are, I see the comments. What do I do? What do I do? How do I, how, how do I prepare for this? Because there are some things you can do to help make this better for you. Uh, because I lived it, me and Jamie had gone through a number of these things and we were like, you know, what can we do? We lived in an apartment in St. Louis. Um, and so how do we figure this out? Um, number one is figure out ways to save water. Whether that means uh, some cases of bottled water, and I know people are fighting for bottled water right now. I saw a video just the other day on Facebook of people actually getting in fights at the store for bottled water. Okay, uh, but right now, if you don't know, you have a tap and the tap still works. Do you have containers? Maybe you don't need to buy bottled water. Maybe you need to go out and buy a bunch of containers and get those containers full and put those in your closet. You can fill up your own water from a tap right now. It, you know, it may not be as good as bottled water. You may not like drinking from the tap. You may live in a place where tap water is not the greatest. But you know what? You can boil that water. You can filter that water. But having that water from that tap right now is something that may not always be there. What if that tap got turned off? That would be my top concern. The number one concern is always, always water. So if you can't get the bottled water, you can't get the filtered water, maybe buy a filter, okay, and get water from your tap, put it in the, um, the little Brita things if you can get one of those, uh, or boil it if you have to. You, you have ways. Get containers, fill them with water. Uh, I've heard of people who would plan on filling their bathtub with water and using that as a reservoir if they had to. Uh, yeah, that doesn't mean you can take a shower. <laughs> maybe you have two showers. Maybe you maybe you have two showers in your apartment and two baths, and you can use one for showering and then one for water storage if it has a bathtub. Find ways to store water um, uh, containers. Um, if you're on the top floor, be careful because water weighs a lot. You don't want your floor to cave in <laughs> if it's a horrible apartment. You know, do use your own judgment on that. Uh, I think it's eight pounds for every one gallon, so it adds up fast. Um, but Water. Find ways of storing water some way in your apartment so you have, you know, maybe 100 gallons or so um, spread out throughout your apartment that you can use if the taps were turned off tomorrow. Uh, dry food goods. So number two would be dry food goods. What, do I, what can I get at the store? You know, what, what is available right now? There's not a lot available. Think about beans. Think about rice. The world, most of the world is sustained by rice. Okay, rice is a great food that stays good forever and you can find rice um sometimes a lot of feed stores if you if you if you even if you have to because everyone's goes to walmart walmart sold out sam's club costco gone there's no rice there, there to be had okay but have you ever thought about a feed store drive outside of your town for an hour and go to the feed store usually there's feed stores who still have food left you know and sometimes they have rice and sometimes they have, I remember when we were living in the city and we were boxing up things and boxing up dry goods, I went to a feed store that was about, I don't know, 30 minutes outside of town and I bought 
giant 50 pound bags for $5 a bag of corn. You know, just regular corn, feed corn. And yeah, it had some burrs in it. It had some sticks and stems in it, but it was food. It was feed corn that was perfectly good for grinding in a cornmeal. And it was $5 for a 50 pound bag. Now, inflation has really destroyed that recently. So you're going to pay more than $5 for a 50 pound bag, maybe $10 now, who knows? But a 50 pound bag of corn for like five or 10 bucks, you can get at a feed store. And it's perfectly good for human consumption. Okay, so um, to be honest with you, you, you can eat that. That's totally fine to eat. Uh, they may have rice there. Uh, depending on your feed store, you know, check and see if they have rice. See if they have oats. Oats is another one. Things like that. Uh, don't think that you can't eat that just because it's put in an animal sack. Um, normally, it's pretty good. Now, you might want to uh, take good care of it and see if you can uh, package it up with some oxygen absorbers or maybe some dry ice, if you can get a hold of dry ice, because there may be insects that have laid eggs inside those. And so in six months time, you open that up and it's full of insects. That's possible. Uh, and we would always package our stuff with dry ice and with, or with oxygen absorbers. So if something was in there, it wouldn't hatch or it would die if it did. Um, there was no oxygen in it. So keep that in mind. There are different ways to obtain dry goods, but obtain some dry goods. And rice and beans is like your number one thing. You know, dried corn, um, th another one, dried oats, you know, there are ways to find that stuff, but see if you can get some of that stuff and, and put that aside, uh, because th th that'll feed you. Okay. And it'll stay good forever until you use it. Okay. Uh, water filter. Again, we have mentioned this previously. Try to see if you can get a water filter. Um, even if it's like one of those Brita things, which aren't that great, but th that will help, you know, if, if, if there is a, a, a bad water source nearby, but you can get water, hopefully, there, it, it's always going to rain. Hopefully it's going to rain at some point. There's always ways to collect water. There's usually a stream nearby or, or a ditch or something you can collect water from and haul it if you had to. And believe me, when things really get bad, people will do that. In, in other times in history, things have gotten that bad, even in the cities, even in your modern history, uh, Venezuela, um, Sarajevo, and Buenos Aires. I always bring those, those instances up where that has happened. So, um, find a way to filter more water. Uh, if you can get a hold of a water filter, if you can hold, get a hold of um, like a Ketodyne or a Ketodyne Vario or a Lifesaver bottle or some of these, a Berkey, some way to filter water, uh, see if you can make that a priority. Write that as a priority and see if you can get a way to filter water. Um, a bug out bag. If you have a bug out bag, um, maybe you don't. Maybe you just have a backpack or some kind of thing that you can put in some supplies. Let's just say there's a knock on your door. You know, the, the town is burning down because that's happened before. Look up Chicago fire, look up the London fire. Major cities have burned to the ground or almost burned to the ground throughout history. And it's usually in times of economic turmoil that some of these things happen. What if there was a knock at the door and you got to leave like right now? You need to grab a bag that's got maybe your passport, your identification, some important documents, maybe some medication, some important things like that, maybe a water filter, something, you know, things that are just vital that you cannot lose in a fire uh, and you had to leave the house tomorrow. Put that in a bug out bag and, and, and or even in a sack, you know, some sort of sack that you have to go. And so when we lived in an apartment, we had bug out bags. We had bags that were packed with just the most vital, important things, maybe a change of clothes, maybe some feminine products. You know, Jamie had some feminine products in her bag, bag and, you know, just things like that, that you can, that would be great if you just had that, if you had to walk out the door in the next five minutes, you know, do you have a bag like that? Put together a bag like that, just some things that you would need, especially to have if you had to leave. Okay, um, make plans right now to develop relationships with relatives, friends. Hey, listen, what are you doing? What are you doing if this happens? Um, talk to your friends and relatives and say, hey, you know, I, I've, I'm thinking about what's going on. You know, what would you ever do if you had to do such and such? How would you react to that? But start developing relationships right now with friends, family that maybe you can network with and maybe get some supplies. Maybe someone has like an extra water filter that you can have or you can buy from them or trade for for something. Um, who knows? But have maybe a, a one or two close friends or relatives that you can start to network with, develop a relationship with and maybe work with so that you can you know, overcome this situation that we're facing right now. Uh, you, the lone wolf does not normally do well. Okay, let's just go with that.
Okay, medications. The last one is medications. So this is something that's going to be more important as time goes on. As if if the economy is really truly collapsing right now, like like a lot of people say, or it could, um, things like insulin, some important medications that people absolutely rely on to stay alive. Do you have enough of these? Uh, my father, back years ago, always began to get a little bit of extra insulin every time he got insulin because he has type one diabetes. And so he would get a little bit of insulin extra that he wouldn't need, and he would put it in in like storage in the fridge, okay? And so now he has enough that he rotates through. He has about enough insulin to last him, I think, a year. And insulin does not go bad like they say it does. The medical industry puts forceful expiration dates on things that do that actually do not apply to them because they want things to keep be rotated and be fresh always. And so they force expiration dates that really don't, that really aren't relevant. And so he has a year's worth of insulin saved up that he can he rotates through and he's been doing that for the last few years. So that if he ever needed insulin, if he couldn't get insulin, while everyone else is basically dying because they can't get the insulin, he has insulin for a year, hoping that a year is enough time that uh, supplies would come back online and he would be able to get insulin again. So he's planned for an entire year of not having insulin. Um, Things like that. Do you have enough medication to get you through? If, if that medication is absolutely necessary for your survival or at least for you to being able to function, do you have enough of it to last maybe a month, two months, six months, a year? Have you thought about that? Maybe now is a good time if you haven't started already to put some back some extra medicine, maybe some antibiotics, maybe some fish antibiotics, things like that. Do you have that sort of thing? Have you thought about it? Have you done any research on it? That stuff is important. And so think about it now. Is there something that you could not live without if it was taken away from you tomorrow? Really, literally couldn't live without. Think about things like that. If I was in an apartment, if I was in an apartment right now and I was scared to death that this a collapse was actually happening, these are the things that would be foremost on my mind. How would I be working through these things? How would I be solving these problems? How would I be getting what I need to get so that I could have a better peace of mind about this. And I know there are some people out there, really, really sad people, who are going to say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to let God worry about it. The ark didn't save Noah. Obedience did. The ark did not save Noah. Obedience did. God told him to build the ark. You know, there's things you can do to help ensure your survival, the survival of your family. And just throwing your hands up and not worrying about it is not going to make the problem go away because it will become a problem and it will get worse and worse and worse. So do what you need to do now to safeguard yourself and your family. Think about things because the things you do today may save your butt tomorrow. Don't think, I, I like this guy, uh, uh, Sustenance and Covering. He's got a YouTube channel. And I love how he ends all of his videos. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. Because there's people out there who just don't want to survive and he and people who get mad at him because he plants fruit trees. Because when you plant a fruit tree, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can actually get fruit from that tree. Time must pass. And so you plant the tree now so that later it will produce fruit or nuts or whatever it produces for your consumption, for your benefit. And people are like, I don't know why you plant those trees. I mean, I, I just assume rely on God for my food. See, the problem there is, is that you're confusing God with Uncle Sam. You know, that, that's the way it's always been. People want to confuse God with Uncle Sam. Anyway, great channel. Um, it's your benefits. To your, you plan ahead now for the benefit later. And so take this opportunity, what little time we may have left, to put some effort and time into your own survival uh, in the next few, you know, for the next few years or for the next few months. Who knows what's going to happen? The world's full of a lot of questions right now. But if I was in an apartment right now, because I've been there, and we were woke back then, and we were planning back when we lived in an apartment, these are the things I did to, to hope to give me a better peace of mind so, so that if something did happen, we would be okay. We would be better off than if we had not planned at all, put it that way. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Guys, hit the like button. Don't leave the video without hitting the like button. That I would really appreciate that because, man, YouTube is harsh today. 
we want we want them to know that people actually watch and like our videos. So don't go anywhere without hitting that like button. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I hope to have earned your subscription. And check out our sponsor at the end of the video. Um, a good immune system is really important right now. So maybe if you go ahead and purchase some of the Zeal products, I know they have some left um, for sure. There, there's some in stock. Uh, you're going to help boost your immune system in times like these when your immune system really could use it. Okay, so check out. And every purchase you make helps to go help uh, the homestead, helps to support the homestead. Okay. That being said, I'm going to go put this cheese in the fridge and go give this buttermilk to Joanne so she can get started on pancakes and get the butter out to where it needs to go. <sighs> one day at a time, folks, one day at a time. All right, guys, see you next time on an American Homestead. I'm pretty sure that the problem we're facing could easily be uh, solved for at least another century if everybody alive would just go outside and plant one fruit tree right now. But as I said earlier, America is enacting one law after another against such a thing, and most people buy into such foolishness. So much so that if you do try to plant a fruit tree, your neighbors will probably turn you in. In fact, I've been told more than once since starting this channel that the things that I do show a lack of faith in God. I should be dependent on God, not on my trees that I plant. Comments like this show why it's so dangerous to confuse God with Uncle Sam. It's Monsanto's law that people not grow their own food. God's law is, and always has been, exactly the opposite. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.